What do you do from an IT perspective when one of your client's users loses their computer? I had this ticket the other day. Guys, my name's Jake. I'm a system administrator at an MSP. An MSP is a managed service provider. So we give IT services to other companies, specifically financial institutions like banks and credit unions and payment processing companies. Um, the other day, I had a priority one ticket that this guy had lost his computer and was really worried that you know there was gonna be data loss or something like that. So I was happy to jump on the ticket and take a look at it and today I'm gonna to talk about that experience. So my first thought when someone loses their computer is of course we need to block access to that computer, right? If the computer has network access, we need to block it. We need to make it so that nobody can log into it. Now fortunately, we have some very strict controls because of regulation on our devices uh, that they have to be something called hybrid joined. So in IT, you have your on-premises infrastructure, like things like Active Directory. Right? That's where you domain join your computers uh, and they get to have a relationship with that domain. You also have the cloud side of things. So the Microsoft side of things where you can uh, manipulate people's ability to access things using some, things like conditional access. Um, conditional access is just that. It's you get to access your resources based off of certain conditions. Let me give you a couple of examples of the conditions on which people can or can't access resources. If you have an administrator account, you cannot access Microsoft from off premises. Okay, how does Microsoft know what is on premises? and off premises, you have these things called named locations. I might have a named location that says, hey, this public IP, the bank network's public IP, is the only place that administrators can access Microsoft from. Why? Because if administrator accounts somehow got compromised, which is extremely difficult, but if, if it did, and the attacker was somewhere in Romania, they wouldn't be able to access Microsoft resources from that administrator account. Okay, another condition, MFA. You have to have multi-factor authentication, and maybe you have to use the Microsoft Authenticator app in order to access Microsoft. That's where we can set that up. And we have another condition. The other condition is RAD Windows, Require Approved Device Windows. It means that the computer that you access Microsoft resources from has to be in a compliant state. What that means is that it has to be a domain joined computer, like this guy's computer was. Um, after it's domain joined, you actually have to enter a register it as well, so it's gonna become something called hybrid registered. Um, it has to have a certain level of updates, you know, it can't have a super old operating system or, or anything like that. It has to have BitLocker, and you know, I'm sure there's a gazillion different requirements, um, security requirements for that Require Approved Device Windows. But when you have a hybrid joint device like that, uh, you also have some cloud manipulability of the device. So in the case of a stolen laptop, like the one that I got, the first thing I'm doing is I'm going into Entra. Entra is Microsoft's cloud side of things. And I'm finding that device and I'm disabling the device. That means that nobody can log into that device uh, is provided that it has internet access. You know, people could still use cached credentials to log into the device, especially if it's not connected to a network. But if someone connects it to Wi-Fi and tries to log in, it's not gonna work. Okay, so that's the first thing. The second thing is the user identity side of things. If this guy was still logged in to Microsoft, because Microsoft, because things save credentials, right? They just, they save something called a token, uh, a primary refresh token, um, and then like a session. You have a session that you're logged in for. Maybe your session time is four hours. That's why you don't have to keep putting your password in over and over and over again when you're logging into something. So in this case, my thought is I need to get this guy logged out. First of all, I need to remove all of those sessions. So the first thing that I'm doing is, uh, I'm going into Entra and I'm revoking sessions. So if it's logged in, he's logging out instantly, right? Instantly. I'm also revoking MFA sessions so that if he tried to re-log in, like if this attacker had the password, they would have to re-put in MFA. This guy has his MFA set up on his phone. His phone didn't get stolen, okay? This is why MFA is so, so, so important. Because when I remove all that Microsoft resources, all of the sessions, all of the MFA sessions, in order for the attacker, even if he had the username and password to, and this attacker is, is someone fictional, right? We just think he might've gotten his laptop stolen. We're just acting um, out of an abundance of caution as if somebody had stole it and was trying to get in. You know, you just want to be safe. Better be safe than sorry. And so in this case, if the attacker did have the username and password, he could put them in all they want. The MFA code is still going to this guy's phone. Now you might say, Jake, what if the attacker just re-registers MFA from his own phone, right? We have another conditional access policy for this. The other conditional access policy is you can't register MFA from off-premises. So just like I was talking about the administrator accounts earlier, that they can't log in from off-premises, that was just an example. Another example is you can't re-register register MFA from off premises. This means that if Buddy gets a new phone and he's got to re-register MFA, he has to be on the bank network. He has to be at this certain named location or wherever you want to you know, call it, um, whatever public IP they're going to make that request from. So that's just another layer of, of security, right? And 
Of course, we have more granular control over the Microsoft account. Like I'm also just blocking sign-ins instantly, right? So I'm resetting this guy's password uh, to something that's secure and that only I know, and I'm blocking sign-ins instantly. So from that perspective, like even if the guy had MFA, even if he had all of the keys to the world, he wouldn't be able to drive because he doesn't have access into this guy's account. So the first thing was blocking that out. Um, the second thing was resetting passwords. The third thing was I discussed with our security team because I'm not a cybersecurity guy. I have multiple security certs, um, the Security Plus and the S. C300, which is Microsoft's Identity and Access Management Security Cert, uh, but I'm still, I'm not a cybersecurity analyst or anything of that sort. I'm just a system administrator. So I went to our security team and I asked them, hey, anything else that I should do? The security team recommended me, let me pull it up here. I've got it up on my screen. Aha, the security recommended me that we could also do a remote wipe of the device. Um, that's really cool. And I went ahead and just had them do that. Uh, and also that if he had anything, you know, that was in like a pat, like a browser, like uh, LastPass or anything of that sort, that this guy should reset all of his passwords. Again, just out of an abundance of caution, reset your password so that you're safe from that kind of thing. And then also there's a remote Microsoft security, like a remote erase option that you can do. So we had him do that as well. I'm trying to see if I missed anything else. The last important thing that I'm missing, BitLocker. BitLocker is something that encrypts your drive at rest. So even if you had a computer stolen, um, but they don't have the password, they can't actually get into that computer uh, because it's all encrypted. Like even if they took the hard drive and they tried to like, you know, physical layer, get the data off of that hard drive, it's all encrypted. Fortunately, we use BitLocker as well. And uh, it's getting more and more common uh, that BitLocker is used. So this guy did have BitLocker enabled. Um, if you know, if you've ever gotten to the BitLocker screen, there's a really long BitLocker key that you have to have in order to get into the device. It's not stored on the device. It's stored in a separate location. You could store it in, I believe, Active Directory. I know you can store it in Entra. Um, we store it in uh, a separate place as well. So I have the BitLocker key. It's encrypted. The guy's device is disabled. All of the identity side of things are taken care of, like, you know, sessions removed, sign-ins blocked, passwords reset. Now on Monday, because today's Friday, uh, this guy's going to get his new laptop and I'm going to have to set him up with his new laptop. The guy works remotely. There are a couple of other considerations with setting up a new laptop. First of all, remember what I said, you can't re-register MFA from uh, an off-prem location. However, we don't have to do that because he already has his MFA set up on his phone. So that's good. So that side of things is taken care of. Provided that the new laptop is domain joined and already intra registered or rather hybrid joined and in a compliant state, he should be able to get his laptop, log into his laptop. There are a couple of things uh, if nobody logged into the laptop recently and they send him this laptop, he's not going to be able to use his domain credentials because the laptop's not going to recognize it and he's going to have to be able to be on VPN like as if he were on the physical network so that he can authenticate directly against Active Directory. That's one of, these are things that I'm already thinking of in my head. So what I think I'm probably going to have to do is make a local administrator on the laptop or use the laps password if they already have one set up, log in, get him logged into VPN, switch users and then have him log into his account while he's on VPN. This is a common thing that you have to do in IT and understanding local logins versus actually domain logins and how Windows devices cache credentials is a really big step in becoming a decent domain generalist. Again, in the MSP world, uh, we, I see this a million times since I've been a tier one. The first 15 to 20 times, it was confusing as heck. Like maybe if you're brand new to IT, you just heard me say that and you're like, what the heck? Um, that makes no sense. But it's a very common process where we have to make a local administrator, hop in, get them on VPN, switch users, have them log in with their domain credentials uh, so that the computer can cache those credentials and then the computer remembers those domain credentials and they can log back in and get into VPN as they need. So maybe I got a little bit long winded with this video, but yeah, the guy got his laptop stolen. It was a pretty fun ticket. Uh, it was like an hour of work and working with security services. And now I'll talk to this guy on Monday and get him set up. So appreciate you guys uh, for all the support lately. Be safe, be smart, make some good decisions and do not lose your laptops. Bye.